three, two, one. Welcome to Innovating for the Earth, the story of how Australian company Kalix is developing and using technology that can help heavy industries significantly reduce their environmental impact. In previous episodes, you might have heard, we've discussed uh, the Kalix Kelsiner, kind of a giant kiln used to heat up minerals to liberate the valuable materials within them. And we've talked about how the Kalix Kelsiner can reduce the amount of carbon produced in large-scale industrial processes. But how do you power the Kelsiner? Doesn't running it also produce carbon that perhaps undermines the benefits Well, traditionally, yes, calciners have been powered by fossil fuels like coal or natural gas. But now Calix have developed a way to power calciners using electricity. Now, you might think, so what? It might be coal-powered electricity. So where's the environmental advantage in that? Well, yes, but... It also might be electricity created by renewable energy, which would mean running a calciner on electricity would create a big environmental advantage. And even if the Calix electric calciner was powered by coal-created electricity, it would actually still use less coal to power it than you'd need to power a more traditional coal-heated calciner. But what do I know? You can probably already sense I'm reaching the very outer edges of my knowledge. Let's find out more about the electrification of Calix calciners from Michael Wheatland, Calix's business development manager, sustainable processing. Michael's an engineer turned commercial manager. He joined Calix in 2012 and helped design the unique carbon negative mineral technology in the Calix flash calcination process. He's led commercialization initiatives of the technology around the world and now is responsible for the global rollout of the Calix electric flash calciner technology. Hello, Michael. Hi, James. It's uh, it's fantastic to, to join you on the podcast. Yeah, welcome. So tell us how, when and how and why you joined Calix. So about five years ago, um, uh, actually a little bit longer than that now, um, I was working uh, with with Rio Tinto uh, on a more traditional um, calcination process. Which calcination is it's really the process of of cooking cooking rocks. Um, uh, that way you can liberate the the minerals and use them for something you know something useful. Um, there's lots of different applications for calcination. The, you know you've got uh, alumina to make um, in the process of making aluminium. Uh, you use it to to make cement. You use it to make uh, different types of clays. There's there's all kinds of products out there in the world uh, that use uh, calcination. And you know, since the start of time, that's been um, that's been done by essentially lighting a fire under a pile of rocks. Um, yeah, it's it's obviously got a little bit more um, uh, sophisticated since then. And I was working um, with with Rio Tinto on on one of those. Uh, uh, it was an oil powered um, uh, calcination process. Um, which you know is quite common throughout the world using bunker fuel oil, which is the same oil that um, that the uh, say uh, the ships that transport the containers around the world use. Uh, and it, it became pretty clear to me that the um, you know the, the amount of energy and and the the dirty fuel that's going into these things is uh, is a bit of a problem. So um, yeah, back then I, uh, I I found Calix and thought it was a, a fantastic. Uh, Opportunity to to really change up the calcination process, and it was is really the uh, you know, the only the only technology on the landscape for uh, for really revolutionising the um, uh, that process. So, so, so that was uh, your prime motivation in joining, not a kind of a career thing, but this is an interesting new technology that might be might have the potential to do some good things for the environment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Uh, uh, back back in the day uh, when I when I joined Calix, it was eight years ago actually. Um, it was a small startup company, and uh, uh, anyone who's uh, joined or had anything to do with startup companies knows that uh, you know money is not the uh, money and career is not necessarily the motivator for for anything. Yeah. It's more about uh, passion and uh, and 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 value. So um, yeah, so that that was uh, 
that was what really yeah. drew me to to Calyx. It's the story behind Calyx and uh, and the technology, the potential for the technology. So, yeah. so the first calcina Calyx built was powered by electricity. Uh, sorry, it wasn't powered by electricity. It was powered by natural gas. Why did you start thinking about trying to use electricity for power? What was the problem you were trying to solve? Yeah, so um, in, in terms of the original development of the calciner, um, it started off using um, using gas, so nat- natural gas or LPG. In fact, when the when the first calciner was built, it was built like the very, very first one. It was built in somebody's backyard and it was powered, you know, with, with kind of barbecue gas yeah. bottles type of thing. Um so uh, I suppose that's where it started. And you, you need to use a, um, a, a really uh, abundant and easy to use fuel initially to, to start developing the technology. But um, it, it became pretty clear uh, after a while that the technology, because the, the furnace within the Calyx calciner technology, the furnace is separated from, the, from where the minerals are, where, where you're processing the, um, the product. So it, it became pretty clear that, that we could use any type of fuel um, and as the world's been been shifting towards uh, decarbonising the economy, and and uh, uh, as you can see from the latest um, COP26 conference uh, that that all the world leaders have been to, um, it's it's shifting uh, certainly shifting towards electrification and and being able to provide renewable and, and cleaner energy via the via the electric grid. So and and a lot of it's um, about efficiency, isn't it? About about harnessing all the energy you're producing rather than wasting it, perhaps as an analogy with a car. Yeah, absolutely. So um I suppose if you um if you, you have a think about how uh, the fuels are used within traditional processes, like uh, so traditional calcination. You've got you've got a fuel, whether it's a liquid or a solid, you know, that's uh, or a gas that's that's burned, um, and the the uh, the the output of that is, um, is is you've got an exhaust gas. Um, so in a car, that that obviously comes out the exhaust pipe, but uh, yeah, and, and that's processes. wasted energy. Whenever you, whenever you see or hear, uh, whenever you see an exhaust pipe and notice there's something come out of it, the exhaust pipe is hot, that's wasted heat. The noise it's created is wasted energy too. It's all wasted, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, any, anyone who's uh, brushed up against an exhaust pipe on a car <laughs> that's uh, been running for a little while knows the uh, the amount of energy that's, that's, that's dumped out and wasted. Um, but uh, fortunately with... Um, uh, with uh, electric processes, um, the, the the process is is incredibly efficient. I mean, you, you hear about uh, the, say electric cars like Teslas or uh, Nissan Leafs and those type of things. Um, they get incredibly high efficiency, um, mainly because, as you said, you know they don't they don't produce this exhaust gas, which is you know it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of heat being dumped out in in an exhaust gas. Um, there's yeah less noise and 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 that type of thing. So. Um, but by being able to eliminate that that actual burning process, um, where where you've got this this really hot gas that's being dumped out to the to the atmosphere, um, you, you can save uh, you know thirty you know almost thirty percent in terms of the the efficiency. Um, so it kind of makes but, sense to do things electrically or in an efficiency sense, but also in an environmental sense. They're not playing off e- each other; they're complementary. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think you mentioned before about the um, uh, the question of you know if if the electricity is produced using coal or or, or other type of types of fossil fuels, um, and that that is an interesting it's an interesting question because you know if if people say oh, well you know where, where's your energy actually coming from. Um, yeah, you you have to say well it's coming it's currently coming from um, from from coal, but uh, the fact that we're pre- making a, a technology that enables um, the use of uh, uh, renewable energy or, or different types of clean energy in the grid, um, it, it, it bit by building up that that demand, it, it creates it creates a demand for more clean energy um, within the electrical grid. Yeah. Um, so you get the benefit of. Uh, in in the short term, that just the efficiency benefit of not having to you know have that exhaust gas burning in within your process, so you might save thirty percent in terms of your in terms of your efficiency, but it also enables um, the the transition in the future to a uh, yeah to a, to a 
a renewable, completely renewable electricity grid. Um, and it's not like it's not unfamiliar around the world. There's uh, heavy industries that, I mean, take um, the production of uh, aluminium, for example. Uh, there's 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 some countries like Canada and and around the Scandinavian countries that absolutely dominate that industry because they they've got almost unlimited free hydroelectricity, uh, which is completely carbon free, um, and that uh, you know that that industry is incredibly aware that that um, uh, that that those fossil fuels um, are far more expensive and, and more wasteful than these uh, these highly efficient um, electricity processes. So if this makes sense in an efficiency in an efficiency way, why can't you just take all the traditional calciners and power them all on electricity? Swap them over. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so in in traditional uh, in traditional calcination, um, the the actual fire or the the thing that you know cooks the rock, the, the heat, um, is mixed in with the mineral. Uh, so we're we're essentially firing natural gas or some kind of fossil fuel into where where all the mineral is, so into where the where the rocks are, um, and because of that, uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, to to electrify something because how do you put electricity into rocks? Um, it's it's very difficult yeah. to 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 inject that energy into um, into like a mineral stream, whether it's powder or it could be like large. Even rocks. I get that. Um, so you've explained that very well. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a tricky problem. Um, now the the Calex technology, because the because the where the process is occurring is separate from the um, the uh, from where the where the mineral is, um, we've got the ability to change out the uh, the energy source into electricity. Right. Um, to give you a bit of a, an analogy there, um, say if you were trying to bake a cake, um, a traditional calciner would be like uh, having your oven, you know, turning your oven on at home and throwing all of the ingredients into the oven um, and hoping that a cake comes out. Um, so essentially what you're doing is, you, you know, you're just you're, you're putting it all in the same place. So you've got the heat in the oven and you throw the ingredients into the oven and hope a cake comes right. out. The, the Calex technology, what it does is... It gives you a cake tin. You know the the uh, what you do is you put the ingredients inside the cake tin, and then the cake tin goes inside the oven. So that way the the heat is separated from where the mineral is or the thing you're trying to cook is. Um, and and by doing that, um, it doesn't matter. You know people people buy gas ovens or they buy electric ovens, um, and it doesn't matter what, what type of energy source that you're using, as long you as long as you've got a cake tin, you're going to be able to make a cake. Uh, so that's a good one. That's a great analogy. So you've talked about why do it, and you've talked a bit about how it works. Let's go on to how it developed. So idea comes before execution. Um, you know, Calix had this idea about electrifying the process. How did you go about creating electric powered calciners? Yeah. So I suppose that, uh, that that is a tricky question, isn't it? Because well, it's a big um, question. Kind of mentioned before. It's not going to be a short yeah. answer, I imagine. Yeah, we just I'll, knocked it I'll up on and, Sunday. I'll try and keep it brief. <laughs> um, so the uh, yeah, so I, I think we we kind of talked before about how how it's it's quite difficult to inject you know electrical energy into um into a process. Uh, you know, at the Calex process uses um, you know, uh, mineral powders. Yeah. Um, so a bit like you know a bit like the flour in the cake, um, and as you can imagine, um, you know just just adding electrical elements, uh, so like in your toaster, uh, into 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 your cake tin, <laughs> it would create a huge mess. Uh, you'd end. I mean, anyone who's who's uh, had a bit of toast lean up against the electrical elements inside their toaster knows, you know, it, cre- it creates a huge mess. It burns it burns the toast, and the the bit of the bread sticks to the elements and things like that. Uh, so. Uh, electrifying the the actual process um, by putting electrical elements directly into the mineral is is a bit of a problem because it causes fouling um, uh, on on the electrical electrical elements. But there's also the problem that uh, in order to do this processing, you need to get those elements incredibly hot. So um, uh, we we had some challenges uh, through the development process where uh, I mean, number one we have to use very specialised uh, 
uh, steels, so new steels that have been developed over the past 20 years uh, in both yeah, all, well, all of the internal uh, components in the in the system. So that includes our uh, our reactor design or the the, the actual calciner design, which which is inside the furnace, but also the the actual elements as well. Um, they've they've got to run up to incredibly high temperatures, over a thousand degrees Celsius, uh, and at that temperature, metals get pretty soft. Yeah, uh, and uh, if you don't have them uh, uh, arranged in exactly the the correct way, you could end up with um, you know, metal that's that's either elongating or failing. So, um, do you have a fair bit of that, bit of trial and error? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. developing uh, developing these technologies is uh, it, it takes a lot of effort. It's not even though it, we make it sound quite simple. Um, whereas it's a uh, you know it's a cake tin. You know, yeah, that, that's a it's a. I mean, were there moments where simple. you thought, look, this is a great idea, but the technical challenges are too great? When we, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Oh, look, I think um, I think there was there was one point where we we had these electrical elements, um, uh, you know, not not arranged very well, and uh, we ended up with a, a tangle of spaghetti inside the uh, uh, spaghetti of wires um, of these these electrical heating elements um, right. inside uh, inside that, that, one that. of the units. Oh, it's just um, you know, as as wires get hot, you know, they they get longer, yep. um, and they they tend to walk around right um because they're they're hot and they're they're malleable so they uh they, they shift around and uh that was uh that was a particularly difficult time but uh, uh using some of the amazing engineers that we've got they've, they've come up with some um brilliant techniques to to be able to um make sure we've got reliable uh, electrical input via these uh electrical elements um so that, that way we can uh we, we've got really tight control over um uh, different temperatures uh, within the within the furnace and the calciner. So, uh, so, so I can... guess it's a series of look. This is our big idea. This is our destination. These are the obstacles to getting to it. Okay, we've hit this obstacle. Why did those wires turn into spaghetti? What happened specifically? What is the problem or problems? Then, are there potential solutions? Explore each one. I mean, it's kind of exciting and also kind of frustrating too, isn't it? It is. It absolutely is. But it it also takes a lot of different disciplines. So yeah. in order to in order to work all that out, um, you need mechanical engineers and you need electrical engineers and uh, you need process engineers. There's there's a lot of uh, different specialties that go into designing these things. Uh, and unless you bring all that together in in one place, um, uh, concentrating on 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 this specific outcome of electrifying calciners that it, uh, it would it would be impossible to coordinate. And, and what was your specific role in that process? So my specific role was around the, uh, the I'm, I'm a process engineer or chemical engineer by uh, by training. Uh, so I, I'm very much involved in the um, uh, in the the actual mineral conversion process. Uh, so uh, yeah that was that was my role. Right, right. So you were just hoping all the electricity people get their act together and sort out the wires D- doing a bit of delegating it's it's certainly a bit of a challenge yeah. uh you know dealing with with electricity um it's not not something in my wheelhouse um uh but uh yeah were, 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 were there a couple of big breakthroughs where you thought look this thing we've been going back and forth for ages for months and bang i think we've got something yeah i think uh, absolutely so we've, we've got a um uh, a small pilot scale calciner on site at, in in uh, here in Victoria in Australia, um, which is called Batman, um, which is an interesting name for it. Yeah. Uh, that that stands for uh, uh, batteries and manganese because right. uh, it was originally designed for uh, to produce material to go into lithium ion batteries and, and manganese batteries um, as as cathode and anode material. Uh, and yeah, this this unit. Um, uh, it was it was rewired a number of times um, and rebuilt a, a number of times, and uh, it has been it has been going really strong since since the last rebuild, uh, where we've come up with uh, different um, th- different internal designs and and uh, uh, it seems to have we seem to have hit the nail on the head. Um, it's been been going quite strong for quite a while now. So we've talked about how this process of electrifying calciners can reduce carbon emissions, but I understand it can actually create minerals that somehow become 
carbon negative downstream. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's uh, that, that's right. There's um, there's minerals that we process. So examples are things like concrete, lime, and and magnesium style uh, magnesium uh, uh, mineral based refractories. Um, yeah, th- those processes they they go through a de- decarbonisation process. So the the carbon dioxide is taken off the rock um, as it runs through the calx calciner. Um, that that carbon dioxide can then be uh, utilised. Um, uh, separately, so it's not emitted into the atmosphere, uh, and then um, when the, uh, the 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 product, uh, which is say a calcium oxide or cement or refractory, goes into um, say a building, you know, if you're going to build a, a a building or a um, a bridge out of the stuff, what happens is that as you set the concrete, carbon dioxide actually is absorbed onto uh, the concrete structure. It so sucks it in from the it atmosphere. It sucks it in. That's yeah, that's wow. it. Yeah, so the the carbon dioxide is then reintegrated, or the the carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere is then reintegrated and stored inside the bridge, right, or the building. So you you get the uh, the benefit of not having the carbon dioxide emissions when you're producing it, uh, but also um, when you construct the bridge, you're sucking carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, so that that way. Uh, we can we can actually produce carbon negative uh, minerals or carbon negative products. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that must be very satisfying. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, as well as the you know energy efficiency benefits just of the electrification process, you you can actually store carbon at the same time, which is pretty pretty incredible. So, how long was it from? And this might have been before you joined Calix. Someone thinking we should try and electrify our calciners to it being done and ready to go. Uh, so the actual process of designing an electric calciner, um, uh, I mean, any, anyone would tell you that you know the process is never finished, right? Yeah, but, right. Um, yeah, so uh, we're we're constantly coming up with uh, with improved and better ideas. Uh, and each each new generation of of Calix Calciner is um, is a little bit different from the last, and just moving towards that really refined process is uh, is uh, is a, is a challenge um, that our engineers are, are constantly working on. Um, I mean, traditional calciners um, have been refined over the period of you know hundreds of years, uh, where there's been small incremental improvements um, to to direct fired fossil fuel type of calciners um, where they've, they're really approaching the limits of um, you know theoretical efficiency with those with those type of calciners um, which is I suppose pretty amazing because the the, the calyx electric calciner is significantly more efficient in terms of energy mm. input than than the traditional ones so we've already had a big step change in, in terms of efficiency um, and honestly we're, we're not near the maximum efficiency for our units. So we've got um, a, a far more efficient unit uh, and plenty of opportunity to improve our process over the next 10 years to, to make it even even more efficient over time. But, but from when it was first an idea to when the first version was running, how long was that? Oh, I didn't answer your actual question, right. sorry. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the, the idea of... Um, of the Calix electric calciner came up fairly fairly early on uh, when we were considering you know different uh, different energy sources. Um, it would have been uh, at least three years between when we um, when we had uh, a fully functional large scale calciner running on um, on on natural gas um, and 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 having confidence that uh, that that system was reliable and efficient and everything. Um, so that we could uh, move over our concentration from our core calciner design over to how do you get electricity yeah. into this thing? Yeah. So it's probably probably three That's good years bleak, of work with a dedicated team. It it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I mean, these, these type of technologies, as I, as I mentioned, traditional calciners have have taken you know many many yeah. decades to 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 reach their peak. Um, and, so three and years. All your calciners. Running on electricity now? Do you still have some of the old ones or not? Yeah, we've still got we've still got some gas ones. So in in some cases, natural gas um, is is the cheapest um, uh, energy source to to use just at this stage. Um, 
But uh, as uh, as we can see from the the COP twenty six uh, United Nations Climate Change Conference, um, even these um, uh, transition fuels like um, like natural gas or LPG uh, are going to be phased out over the coming thirty years. Uh, they've got you know, goals when it comes to eliminating uh, natural gas and things like this. Um, so I. I would expect in the in the future, unless there's some uh, really exceptional circumstances, uh, most of the the, the calciners that are built around the world, uh, whether they're by Calix or not, are, are going to be electric because that is going to be the cheapest um, source of energy moving forward. Especially with the um, with the, the the trade barriers and tariffs that uh, that the um, uh, European Union and uh, China and America are talking about bringing in. Uh, you, it's going to be almost impossible um, to to build a uh, a fossil fuel um, fired process uh, of any kind around the world and expect to be able to sell your product into into Europe or, or yeah. the United States. Yeah. Um, because the the uh, you know, if if you're not being charged a price for carbon at the at the source source of uh, emission, they're going to charge it at the border uh, when, you, when you're selling your product as it's being imported into Europe. Well, as we've seen in the whole history of, of sustainable products and processes, um, is that when there is a new technology that is more environmentally efficient, a small percentage of people will get it or a small percentage of companies because they're doing the right thing. But it really starts to take off when it becomes economically the best choice. So you've touched on this a couple of times, but Leaving aside just for a moment all the environmental benefits of electrifying a calciner, what's the economic case you can put to clients about getting it now? Yeah, I think I touched on um, on the uh, aluminium industry earlier, which is a really good example of um, an industry that that is already very aware that electricity can be the the cheapest option in terms of uh, energy source. Um, as I mentioned, they've got. Um, uh, they've got an abundance of um, uh, hydroelectricity in in those locations uh, because they've got you know all the snow melting on the on the mountains and then huge rivers yeah. bringing it downstream. Um, in in Australia, I mean we've got a huge abundance of um, uh, of, of solar resources. So we, I mean we're a sunburnt country, right? So let's let's put on some sunscreen and uh, and build those solar panels to protect the ground and and soak up that that energy. Um, so as as we move into a more sustainable world, you know the the difference between um, those those environmental benefits uh, and the economic benefits really are converging. Um, you know, there's, there's really sensible regulation coming in through throughout the world uh, where our economic system is is now uh, it's kind of capturing more of the real costs of doing business. Um, uh, I think accountants refer to this as. Um, uh, unaccounted externality. They do, yeah. A, it's a really weird phrase, yeah. but effectively, what it means is that you're not you're not counting a cost. Um, it might be something like if a if um, you know, somebody's making uh, making something in their backyard and they don't want to they don't want to pay for rubbish disposal, so they just throw it over the neighbour's yeah. back fence. Well, one of the classic um, examples is uh, a company polluting a river by pumping you know, waste into it. That is a cost to the environment, a cost to the world that they're not paying yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and somebody's got to pay to clean up that river, exactly. right? It's usually a local council or government. Um, Our taxes. In the case of, yeah, exactly. In the, in the case of carbon dioxide, um, in the future, it's, it's, it's going to be everyone. So, um, everyone will bear that cost, and the, if we uh, if we don't start moving on it um, soon, you know the cost it will rise over time. Um, so uh, the 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 system that's been set up in I suppose it started in Europe with the carbon trading scheme is is really starting to capture those uh, those additional costs um, uh, that that are that are going to be incurred by um, by others around the world, whether it's um, you know, coastal erosion due to the rising sea levels, or um, uh, you know, um, it, it might be um, coral bleaching, um, which hurts the, uh, the the tourism industries. There's there's a lot of costs associated with carbon dioxide that are just not being passed on to the people emitting the carbon mm. dioxide at the moment. Um, but, uh, but 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 even without that, you'd have a decent argument with with potential clients, wouldn't you? That 
it's just more efficient doing it this way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in in terms of um uh, in terms of the uh the economic benefit um versus the environmental benefit, they're they're not um they're not opposed to each yeah. other. Um so as well as the you know the the economic system starting to take into account those those additional costs related to the carbon, um the uh the, the process is more efficient than a traditional calcino anyway. Um, so it ends up being cheaper to run. Um, you know, I mean, carbon dioxide emissions are the most recent example of um, of, of accounting systems um, taking uh, taking these externalities into account. But you know, th- there's some pretty good examples in the past of when it's when it's really been successfully um, implemented. Like, uh, take for example the uh, the the CFC problem we had uh, 20 years ago, where there was um, uh, there was companies producing refrigerators or air conditioners with these these CFCs or these uh, fluorocarbon chemicals inside the inside the fridges, um, and uh, I suppose and and spray cans and things like that. And, and as you remember, the the world kind of came together and said, "Well, this is damaging yeah. the ozone layer. We've got a huge hole in the ozone layer, um, so we're not we're, we're not going to let you do that. You know, it's going to cost it's it's going to cost us a lot in the future to to repair that ozone layer. So." Um, we're just going to make it incredibly expensive to use CFCs, um, and uh, and that's that's what happened, and that that's a brilliant example of of that you know sensible regulation around the world um, producing uh, a great outcome both for uh, the environment, you know, the ozone layer was healed, but you know it has it hasn't hurt the uh, the refrigeration industry at all. In yeah. fact, it's uh, it's probably it's probably boosted it. Um, so uh, it's a that's a good example, I suppose. You know, another example is, as, as you mentioned, dumping things into into rivers. Um, uh, you know, things like um, you know, phosphate runoff from farms um, cause algae blooms, which then hurts fishery industries and things like that. Yeah. So, um, having those regulations where it becomes very expensive to to dump um, or to have phosphate being dumped into rivers um, uh, Really demonstrates that it, it's it's an effective way to protect the environment, but also um, to protect all of the industries, not just the farm that's putting the phosphate in the river. Finally, focusing on the future of the Calix electric calcina. I know you probably can't tell us everything about all the nitty gritty of negotiations that you're involved in, but in terms of two things, where it might spread out and be used, and also improvements in it that will continue? What can, what can you tell us about the future? We've got some joint ventures with some amazing partners in, in Europe um, for the cement industry. We've got some amazing uh, people that we're working with uh, in, in South America and, and, and in Europe, also in Asia, uh, where there's a lot of industries which are incredibly interested in this electrification because they're having difficulty with selling their products into Europe um, because of the, the, the carbon dioxide uh, border tariffs that are being, uh, being erected there. In, in terms of the technology moving forward, uh, there's plenty of room to, for, for improvement with the, with the, with the Calix technology. Um, there's huge gains in terms of efficiency just initially by, by moving the, the minerals process over to uh, to an electric process, um, but as with uh, as with any technology, there's improvements that are, that can occur over time. So that's usually due to recovery of uh, energy in the in the discharge product and you know other waste heat streams that are being put off the the uh, the, the different processes. Uh, and we're working with uh, some partners who have uh, brilliant ideas um, about about how to do that. Uh, and we've we've come up with some fairly unique designs uh, within the actually that can actually be integrated inside the uh, the the Calix Calcina design that will improve the efficiency even further than just the the uh, the electrification and that and stopping that uh, that waste heat escaping as an exhaust. Well, I mean, well done. There was it's a very interesting story and you know i was worried i must say is, is he going to get into all the technical ins and outs and i won't understand a word of it but it was all um incredibly clear so thank you so much michael for joining us and sharing uh, that very interesting story with a few chapters still to be written of the electrification of the calyx calciner good on you thanks very much james and we will talk to you next time on innovating for the earth